if anyone, uh, I wonder, uh, no, get it out. I wonder if anyone can recognize this, uh, this antenna. Um, I'll give you a clue. Or, uh, there you go. This is a serial game master. Um, and it's developed uh, a somewhat of a fault. Um, it's not the first time I've had to replace a lane for coax in it in the, in the, uh, in the past. Um, it's quite an old serial. This is probably five or six years of age. Um, and unlike most um, serial game masters, this goes up and down um, on my house on a regular basis. Um, <laughs> I, I never put an antenna up and leave it there. Um, I do like to experiment and play, as, as you all as you all know. So I guess this is a little bit of uh, uh, my own fault. Anyway, it's developed a fault. The SWR has gone from flat from uh, 26, 27 megahertz through to um, 30. It was relatively flat, no higher than 1.5. Um, to one and it's gone through the roof. It's uh, gone to plus three plus four um, so It's developed a fault and I don't know what it is, but I'm guessing um, It's had a little bit of water egress um, I think possibly from the from the last time I repaired it or the matching stub um, has been uh, fried or perhaps the uh, antenna has been fried it does live quite close to um, my uh, end fed half wave and it also lives quite close to my two meter antenna um, so I don't know maybe it's uh, something like that or maybe it's purely because of water egress anyway it's uh, it's gone high SWR and I can't find the fault so what I've decided to do is use the 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 skeleton of the old serial game master uh, but actually build my own um, version, which you've seen me do in the past if you follow my my videos. Uh, but put it inside the uh, the skin of um, the commercial av available serial game master. So it's an interesting thing as well because you can actually see how this has been built. So we'll we'll take all of the old coax off and replace it with um, RG fifty eight. Um, and the matching stub we'll make from Westflex uh, uh, 106, I think it is, or 102, I don't know, I can't remember. We'll have a look in a minute. Um, and then we'll rebuild this Serial Game Master um, using other materials. Um, we'll SWR it and see how it works. But, uh, oh, can you see that? Yeah. So this is how they do it. It's actually quite a clever idea. This is the the matching stub here and I don't know why it's not in focus but that's that's the matching stub um, they use a bit of circuit board to to bring it all together which is actually quite a nice idea and I think I'll reuse that um, and uh, it's the same here I'll take this apart and we'll show you how how they've done it and we'll we'll emulate it but um we won't copy because uh, that's not right okay Let's, uh, let's get on. Right, let's undo these. See if it. Uh... Okay. Now I'm aware. Get a cross point screwdriver.
Right, so I've removed it from the plastic uh, former, and as you can see, basically it's a, an SO239 um, in a banjo connector by the looks of it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll replace this. Uh, I'll put a um, an earth ring uh, around it off of a SO239 connector and solder the coax cable to it because I haven't got another crimping tool. So I'm not going to be able to do that, I don't think. Um, and what I'll do, I'll solder a new centre and uh, put the coax on, put this base back onto the former and then run 16 turns of, of the new coax um, onto the former and then run it up inside the pole uh, and then uh, cut it off a bit long uh, and then we'll make off our, uh, our matching stub point. Okay, it's all a bit of fun. Got some. So we'll uh, take that apart desolder it and uh, put a new coax on. So cleaned up. So what we need to do now is I'll take the edges off of that I cut and um, we'll move on. As it goes through here Okay, like so. Well, probably the other way up because it would be neater. And I'll wrap that around the outside of the coax and solder. So I'll just quickly peel back so much of it. Here you go. So this will be soldered to the coax, the braid of the coax. Um, so it goes in, goes to the center, the braid of the coax goes around this tab. This goes up into the, into the hole. We'll get it right, like so. If I can find the right way around. Okay. Coax attached, goes around the, the bobbin, bobs your uncle fans around and it should work just fine. We need to put that in our hole. Oh, look at this. Could have done this better if I tried. make a really good soda joint because I really need to make a really good soda joint in there. Bingo. Right, centre to the outside. Nothing. Perfect. Right, so a very quick look at what we've done. Let's get this in the middle of nowhere. So what I've done is I have soldered the centre core to the centre. I've used that little um, earthing tab off of a standard SO239 to connect the shield to, and I've put it back into the holder, bolted it down, tested it for continuity, and all is good. Right, so the next thing we need to do now is thread it through the former uh, and make sure we've got enough length of coax to do our 16 turns 
and um, meet the Y junction for where we put the matching stub in. So let's work out how much we need for that. Now, the 16 turns on this former, if we use pi r squared, dubri, whatever, is basically a quarter wave, okay? Um, so it's a quarter wave, uh, which is uh, 2.5 meters of coax. So I'm gonna use three meters of coax or measure three meters of coax for that, just to make absolutely sure. And then I need an additional, let's have a look, zoom in, an additional two meters. So I'll make it another two and a half meters. So let's measure off five meters of coax, cut it there, uh, and then we'll start threading it through and wrapping it and doing what we need to do. So, right, let's do that. So I've just pulled off uh, just over five meters of coax and I've cut it. Um, and what we're gonna do now is uh, thread it through, bolt, screw things down, make sure it's all secure and start winding the coil. Right. Right, let's just quickly check. How much do we need from the top of the coil? So we need 2.9, uh, 2.19, 2.219, 2 meters 19. Okay, 2 meters 19 from there to there. So let's measure that and cut it. Make it nice and neat. Okay, so we have got our, our coil on and uh, we've got it in, I think we've got it in the right place. Just quickly checking, yeah, I think it's okay. Just need to tighten down these Allen keys now to uh, grub screws to keep it in place. It'll all be good. I ain't gonna drop any more. And this one is pretty much there as well. Yep. Oh yeah. I think that's it. Our coiling cap is in place. Nothing that goes down any further. It might do a little bit of wiggle. It feels about right. Yeah. Right, I missed a bit and I didn't realise it, so I apologise. So what I've done is I have cut 72 centimetres of West Flex, stripped the end off, soldered the centre cores together. And at the moment, as you can see, I've just wound the uh, the shields together. Next thing I'm going to do is measure out the top section before the, um, what's it called, uh, b before the coax capacitor. Um, and we'll measure that out, strip that back and add it, add it to this uh, section here. Tape up the middle, then solder the braids together. And then hopefully that will uh, add, uh, do our impedance matching stub, but we'll see, won't we? I much prefer a much more mechanical joint, but uh, it is what it is, right?
That's where we can't find enough uh, fingers and hands to do things. I've got any weight I can put on that. <laughs> Righty ho, let's see if we can solve this. Not a lot of room in that. Feels reasonable or looks reasonable, I should say. Boom, slapdash job. So there we are, I've just tested it. There's no shorts, so that's all good. I haven't shorted the end of the matching stub yet. That's the next thing to do. Um, I've not also measured the coax capacitor, but I'm gonna do that next. Uh, well, so that's it pretty much. Um, just test, test, test. So we'll just measure this uh, inline coax capacitor. So we'll go that way. So just put it on, bear with me. Seven point three, and we needed eight point six. Is it eight point six puff? It's close enough, I guess. So we've put our inline capacitor, coax capacitor, which uh, measures just under eight puff, in line now with our driven element. So the center comes up into the center of this bit. Obviously, it's not connected. However, by inductance it is, or by capacitance it is, to the centre core, or the driven element. Okay, so I'll now wipe this up in tape, um, and we'll put it together, put it up, stick an SWR meter on it, and just see how far out we really are. Right, let's see if we can run through this very, very quickly. So here's our new coil, our uh, choke, 16 turns around the former, connected up there. Now, it goes up through the middle of the par of the uh, fiber dash tube, comes out here. Here's the bottom of the uh, the matching stub, which is made from Westflex uh, 103, I believe. 71 centimeters of that, because I cut it too short, but we'll see if it works. This is where it connects to the center core and external and shield of the ongoing length of coax. Which continues up. Oop, get up there. That then goes to our inline um, coax capacitor and then continues on up on a single bit of wire for 3.45 meters. Right, so what I'm going to do now is put that inside of the uh, high gain masters skeleton and uh, put it outside, stick it up, and we'll see if it SWRs, fingers crossed. It started to rain, so I've got to be relatively quick. So I've put the antenna back together, as you can see. I don't know if you can see, it's behind my chair. Right, so it's quite low to the ground, just a simple coax feed into the coil. And as you can see, it just goes up, boom, 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 straight up, nothing special. Not really high up, but it's okay because this is a end fed, center fed, end fed, center fed. Yeah. Um, we'll just check it. Anyway, it goes piece of coax. So you can see all across the floor, up through the skylight in the window. Through the window, down and around and around on the floor and up across the desk and into the top of the MFJ antenna analyzer. Right, let's have a 
Let's have a quick look. Oh, it's looking good. 25 megahertz. Um, yeah, okay. So from 25, let's see where it's usable from. It's actually, I'm amazed. So it's usable from 24 megahertz or 25 megahertz. Oh, wow. 27 is 1 to 1. 27. Yep. Right through all of the CB bands into the amateur bands. Oh, I can't go any higher. Hang on them. Change the setting. So it doesn't like 40 megahertz. What's it going to be at 30? At 30 megahertz, which is there. It's at 1.9, 1.8, at 29.9. So in the FM portion, 1.4, 1.5, 1.5. In the SSB portion and CW portion, 1 1.3, 1 1.2, 27 megahertz, 1 to 1. Oh, mate, I am very impressed with my handiwork. Very pleased indeed. Three days without you there. And uh, I'm very glad to see you guys. Thanks a lot, Excellent and a strong signal. Very nice audio. Thank you so much. Very good morning. And I hope to see you again. 73. Bye bye, Neil. 73. They're running a 590 SG with an Alfred 7 in the antenna. A four element stepper at 70 feet. Excellent. And the Mitron Series of Oxstan Goody X101D. And the linear profile are going to thousand alpha and the six element young man. Name Anatoly and I live in Siberia, over. Okay?